Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm here to talk to you about my theory as to how the six hour P320 can actually discharge without the pull of a trigger. Um, I've studied this gun for quite some time now, and I actually truly do believe that this is at least feasible, albeit very uncommon and very rare. I believe you need a unicorn firearm that has all the characteristics that I'm about to talk to talk about. And then you need you know, all the stars and moons to align in order to get this thing to go off in, in a fashion that does not require the trigger pull. Um, so what am I, what am I talking about? Uh, so I, I have several steps that need to occur. So one, I believe that the gun is over inserted into a holster and that is either due to these, um, type of barrel blocks to align the gun and stop it from rattling, but also optics can contribute to this. And so, you know, the, the slot or the slide is being caught or held by something and you are over inserting the firearm grip module and it is being held in place there and then it is discharging when it is being bumped or gripped or pulled out of the holster um, and, and aligning itself once again and so how that can occur uh, one gun is over inserted causing it out of battery Two, captive safety lever here is rotating up as the gun is taken out of battery. And you can see ever so slightly that when I push down, the captive safety lever is rising. There's some sort of binding material in there. I believe that this can be amplified due to dirt, debris, oil, grime, rust, whatever you can actually not only hold this in place, but there can actually be some resistance. Um, lastly, the, the tolerances between the disconnector, it, it moves quite a bit. Um, and so when it is in an upward position, if it is bound, there is some actual resistance there. And this is going to heavily rely on timing. Um, so uh, the gun is out of battery, um, captive safety lever is rotated up. Sear and striker essentially walk off one another or walk up one another. And they do that and I have, you know, kind of provided a ratchet where if this gray portion is the sear, you can see how, um, you know, you're, you're essentially rotating the sear down uh, even though this is the stationary object and that one is slightly moving. So Imagine sear is moving down, gun is out of battery, the trigger bar is pushed down in this situation, and there is no longer the trigger is disconnected to the sear. It removes a decent amount of weight. Sig put a tail on the sear to connect or back into the trigger bar, which is why you see some people doing that sear movement test and they're getting the trigger to move. But if you push down on the trigger bar, that no longer occurs. Or sorry, if you push down on the disconnector, that no longer occurs because the trigger bar is moved down. Um, so striker and sear essentially walk up against one another. Uh, this is a snap cap for those who are wondering. Uh, this is not live ammunition. The, a fully loaded magazine is inserted into the gun in its normal configuration, it would already be in there. Um, but this is applying upward pressure onto essentially the rear of the gun, similar to Wyoming uh, Gun Project's video and what that demonstrated is that when you have minimal sear engagement and that exceeds, or sorry, slide play ex exceeds the minimal sear engagement, those two components will slip off one another. Um, and I believe that this tension as the gun is already going back into battery is occurring due to the rounds pushing up against the, the rear of the slide. So, you know, you can imagine this is all happening extremely quickly. Um, so gun is then 
gone going back into battery or gone back into battery um uh the striker slips off the striker moves forward the slide comes into battery hang on one moment i need to pull up a photo so i kind of ripped some of these photos off of six own website um where they have the video of how their gun is designed to work. And so if this captive safety lever is rotated up, you can start to see that the uh, striker safety lock, which is the, the most important thing that I don't think people have really explained how to de defeat this, um, but I believe it is coming in contact with the captive safety lever while it is up and it is pushing that up. Again, striker and Sear have lost engagement in the rear here. Here, slide is moving forward. Captive safety lever is rotated up slightly. It is coming in contact with this striker safety lock and it is pushing it upward. Now you have lost Sear engagement. You have the captive safety lock up you have essentially a bound captive safety lever that is now being pushed down and this is all happening within a split second that is allowing the gun to discharge without the pull of a trigger. Um, I, I have looked at this and reviewed this and I am to the point that I don't believe that there is any flaw in at least this theory on the overall operation of the gun. Um, the I, I believe that the secondary sear notch, as you can see in one of, um, so we have the sear here. This is the tail that I am talking about. Um, you have the striker hook and the green sear, as well as um, I should mention, the sear has two springs in the rear that are pushing up. So you can see that this is rotating in this upward dimension uh, along this this pivot here um, and so you know if the trigger bar is pushed down you're losing this connection point and it is allowing it to walk off at first I was like how can you know the the overall design of this does not it's not advantageous to be able to strike something and move upward. Um, so I was really puzzled for a really long time of how we were able to defeat this. And then I was thinking, well, hey, if I have this trigger pulled to the rear, this captive safety lever is up. And if it was not able to move upward, it would be bound it would not go back into battery. And so it has to actually come in contact and be designed to rotate up in order to have the gun come into battery. Um, and so, you know, it, it, it's a stretch because if this is stronger as, as it would be because I'm holding down the trigger and the gun's coming back into battery, it would overpower this. Now, it, like I said, it is a stretch that, you know, a free floating object that is just kind of bound together is enough force to overcome this. Uh, but I believe it is actually possible. Um, and so one of, uh, one of the reasons I actually believe that is because SIG has changed their design of this captive safety lever. Earlier models had a spring here and you can see the part number or code. Um, these uh, P320 safety lever spring long uh, that they have actually removed from the overall design of the platform. And I believe they did that because they thought that potentially it was causing resistance and binding. And as 
what I'm describing is occurring, that it is at least feasible to have the gun go into battery all of a sudden and you know, you've lost your engagement. You've now defeated that safety, which I could not figure out for the longest time how. And it's just timing is everything in this. Um, gun goes in the battery. Magazine is pushing upward on the rear of the slide. Sear is losing connection uh, between the, the striker hook. Uh, it all just kind of makes sense of how this is feasible. Uh, what I can't explain is, you know, the mathematics behind it. Like, how much force is required for the striker and sear to walk up one another? Uh, you know, is the secondary sear notch, is there enough time, if these two components walk off another, there's a, you know, a plane here and there's a secondary plane. Is there enough time for these springs to push up in order to catch this hook, the, the striker hook, as it's moving forward, and I, part of me thinks that there isn't, like, but I, I'm not certain. Um, I just I don't know if these string if these springs are strong enough to to catch it in time, but if they're not, and this is the, the captive safety lever is hitting your safety lock. I, I do believe that there is enough force or momentum that could, just for a split second, cause this uh, to, to allow the firing pin to move all the way forward and strike the primer. Um, so that is, you know, kind of the function of the gun and how I think it could happen. Uh, these, I took screenshots, um, and this is all from SIG's own website. Uh, it's the truth about the P320. If you just search essentially that phrase, SIG's own website will come up and you can kind of walk through the video. You can kind of understand, hey, this has to move. Or, or if I had the trigger to the rear, it wouldn't over, it would jam the gun essentially. It wouldn't go into battery or this component would shear off. Um, even though the angles aren't, you know, a, advantageous to overcoming the, uh, a captive safety lever that is seized. Um, I, I still just think it is absolutely feasible to think that this could happen. Uh, so next, um, what I think needs to happen is one, I would love if people shared this with others in the industry to see if they, they again, believe that this could happen. Uh, two, I think there, in order to test this, you need one, a gun that has either already exhibited these examples um, or a large scale model of testing, essentially out of battery and sear and striker engagement, uh, walking off one another. Um, I may not have mentioned, but I actually did measure uh, with calipers and this, Sear specifically has about 40 thousandths of sear engagement from the bottom to the top of the sear. So that is not a ton of distance. And if slide play, you know, say there's um, 10 thousandths here and slide play is, you know, 12, 15 thousandths, and you have this now upward pressure, it is completely feasible that you know, as the gun is going back in battery, this is all happening at the same time. It's not necessarily steps like one, two, three, but it is all just causing safeties to, to be bypassed and causing a catastrophic failure and discharging around. Um, again, it is, in my opinion, feasible, albeit not likely, and I, I feel like this is actually more in line with what we are seeing in real world situations. If you are able to produce a firearm like the P320 discharging numerous times over and over and over, I don't think you have discovered anything. Uh, I think it would be very difficult to replicate this essentially slide movement where, where Seer and Striker are walking up one another until a point in which 
yeah, the the striker is actually no longer able to move or it's met with resistance or there's too much force and it's at the ceiling of the channel so it literally cannot move any further until you introduce the gun going back into battery and that is where slide play takes over and if slide play is greater than sear engagement the gun will lose sear engagement um so again that's that's the the short of it i guess um i'm not the best presenter I'm sorry about that, but this is what I truly believe is likely occurring, at least in theory. Um, so I would like to ask others, maybe in the industry, who are who have the machine and equipment to actually test this, to test, you know, does the secondary sear notch work? Um, you know, can a striker and sear lose engagement or be in this Goldilocks zone since the gun is out of battery where there is just enough tension to climb up one another um again where your disconnector is down and you're losing that tail end of the the sear that's supposed to be stopping the trigger from moving uh, it just it feels like this very well could be the situation um so yeah that is that is it like i said i would love if other people share this in the industry if you are able to think of something that would uh, defeat this theory i'd love to hear it i i have been looking for this um for quite some time and i could never overcome uh the 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 either defeating the sear or sorry the captive safety lever or the um, sear lock. I could never figure out how you could defeat both sear engagement and the, one of those two components until it kind of hit me, um, until I saw you know that that movement as the gun is going out of battery. Um, it just it kind of makes sense. So again, if you have comments, feel free to write them in in the comment section. Um, I will try to address them. Feel free to share this. Uh, and thank you.